Adobe is a $168 billion corporation. Like, you think they care about you? Like, you don't get to $160 billion valuation by caring about people. You get to that valuation by prioritizing making money. And to make my point, here's what I mean. If Adobe cared about its customers and its users, here's all the things that they would do. I use the Adobe suite of products for 12 years. I do have experience on both sides of the aisle, so I am familiar with Adobe and their products, and I do not like them. But it didn't always used to be that way. I first got into like serious video production towards the end of high school, and my dad saw that I was serious about it, and while I was using Adobe, he told me, he's like, hey, I'll continue to pay for the student rate Adobe Suite product or whatever, the discount that they gave to the students, as long as you continue to use it and continue to pursue it seriously. And it's like, okay, yeah, no problem. That didn't last forever though, because eventually I grew up, got a job. Dad told me like, hey, uh, I'm cutting this off at the end of the month, just by the way. And I'm like, oh crap, I have to start paying 60 bucks a month if I want to keep doing this, you know? And I like, I like doing this, you know? And making videos is fun. There really isn't a day that goes by that I'm not working on a video of some sort, you know? So I'm like, I'm not gonna do that. I'm definitely not gonna pay 60 bucks a month because at this point in my life, uh, I have more important things to spend that money on in terms of just getting myself grounded and stuff. And I know a lot of other people do too. And that's why I think it's so important that people ought to consider alternatives. So at this point, my friend is telling me, hey, you should try switching to DaVinci Resolve. I'm giving it a shot. Uh, you should try it just to see how you like it. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll give it a shot. I know it's popular for color grading and I need an alternative anyways. I'm going to check it out. So I tried it. I loved it. And I think other people ought to try it out also. So I have experience on both sides of the aisle and having used both, I'm going to give you a list of six things that I think that if you're an Adobe user, you're going to love about Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve. First off, this is the biggest thing for me. I think this is alone enough to, or should be enough to make people want to switch, is the fact that it's a one-time payment. That's it. You only have to pay once. You pay $300 one time. That's five months worth of your Adobe subscription. That's it. And then you're done. That That's it. At that point, it's paying for itself as long as you're making money with it. And not only that, but once you make the payment, you get free updates forever. You don't ever have to pay for an update. It's, it's free updates forever. And that alone was enough to make me switch. I didn't want to be paying 60 bucks a month. And I went into the switch mindset with, I'm definitely not paying 60 bucks a month. So this is what I have and this is what I have to make work. And I ended up loving it. So yeah, once you pay for your license, you have it forever. And to contrast Adobe, once you pay for your license, you have it for as long as you continue paying. So let's say you have a bunch of products or a bunch of projects that you're working on. You have those save files. Well, you cancel your subscription. You can keep those files. You just can't open them. They cut you off from being able to use the software completely, regardless of how long you've paid for it or how much time you've put into your project. Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve does not work that way. And I think it's bullshit that Adobe does work that way. I think it's just outrageous. The second thing is that uh, DaVinci Resolve is essentially a bunch of Adobe softwares smushed into one. So the media and cut page are kind of like Adobe Bridge. Uh, the edit page is obviously very similar to Adobe Premiere. The Fusion page obviously is like After Effects. The Fairlight page is like Adobe Audition. The color page is kind of like a fusion between, or fusion, haha, uh, between Adobe Lightroom and the Lumetri function in uh, Adobe Premiere, but it's just on steroids. It's just so much better. You get so much more control. It's it's just so much better. And then lastly, the deliver page is kind of like Adobe Media Encoder. For just being a page all about exporting, there are so many different options and so many different things that went into the deliver page. It's it's awesome. Just the, the software in general is just so thorough and very fulfilled. You know, it, it's, it's good. It's really, really good. And if you haven't tried it yet, I'd really recommend it. The third thing, and I touched on this earlier, is color grading. Color grading is just so much more intuitive. It feels natural and it's very capable in the color page of DaVinci Resolve. It gives you so much more control. And I will tell you that DaVinci Resolve is the Hollywood standard for color in movies for a reason. You will never, ever, ever find a Hollywood movie being color graded in Lumetri. You just, you just won't. And if that does exist, I don't have very high hopes for a very, um, how should I say this, dynamic image. Simply put, it's much more liberating than Lumetri. The fact that you have nodes just makes it very simple what you're looking at. Everything is very visual. Everything flows very easily. Uh, you just get a lot more control, just a lot more control. I will say, having used Lumetri for a very long time, Lumetri feels like a cheap toy. Uh, once you get used to the DaVinci color page. The fourth thing, and this is gonna ruffle some feathers, is Fusion. Now, Fusion does everything that Adobe After Effects does. And if that offends you, 
I'm not sorry. Sure, it works different. When I say that it does everything that After Effects does, there are so many Adobe people that are just very like, oh, well, it doesn't do it this way. Well, it doesn't matter if it doesn't do it that way. It still does it. And I will say that I'm also not the only one that stands behind this, this statement. If you've ever seen Patrick Sterling on YouTube, I, I would personally consider myself moderately uh, skilled Fusion user. And if I'm moderate, then Patrick Sterling is like, he's beyond wizard at this point. He's like Merlin. He, his mind is just so very technical in the way things work and the way he understands things is it's very impressive and he is just so just capable at using fusion to its fullest extent but he also has some videos about how fusion is capable of anything that after effects is capable of it's just if you have not seriously spent some time seeking other people's opinion on this then please don't leave a comment saying oh uh, after effects is so much better because x y and z is if you haven't used fusion a and if you haven't b seek that other people's opinion on it don't leave a comment. I don't I don't care. I'm just going to tell you right now. I'm just I'm beyond hearing stuff like that from people who have never touched uh, any other software other than Adobe in their life. Furthermore, Fusion is also node based, just like the color page, which means that everything is laid out in front of you visually. So everything is, again, just a big flow chart. And what you see is dependent on the things that you put into that flow chart from a beginning to end basis. It gives you a lot of control over what you're working with. And this way, you're not digging through just piles and piles of layers and uh, compositions and compositions of piles and layers to try to get to something. You might have a big node tree, but it's all in front of you and you can keep it very visually organized, just depending on your workflow, what works for you, and how you like to keep things set up. And lastly, Fusion is just better at compositing. At its heart, Fusion is a compositor. It's meant to be kind of like Nuke, which is the industry standard for compositing in Hollywood movies. So all of these things together, it's capable of motion graphics. It's capable of really good compositing, and you can still even do color uh, inside of Fusion. It's just, it's an all-in-one, it's awesome. And it's just built into the software so you can just finish your cutting, jump right into Fusion, add your effects there, add your color afterwards, your sound there, and then export it. It's just a beautiful, refined system that DaVinci Resolve has to offer. And for 300 bucks once, it's a great deal. The fifth thing, uh, this is the one everybody likes to talk about, is stability. Uh, Adobe products just are just not stable. Uh, what's great about DaVinci Resolve is that you can start a project and from beginning to end, you can know that that project is gonna get finished without some bullshit crash. I cannot even begin to explain to you how much time and how much work I've lost just throughout the years using Adobe Premiere. And mind you, I told you I used Premiere for 12 years in the Adobe suite of products, 12 years. Okay, I've lost a lot of time and a lot of work and it's very frustrating when you're working on something, you realize it wasn't live saving and it just crashed because why? Well, you tried to render cache. Don't do that. You know, you know what I mean? That's just ridiculous. It's so dumb. And I personally wouldn't care so much if Adobe wasn't charging 60 bucks a month for their software. You're charging me 60 bucks a month for a software that I can't even rely on to get done what I'm trying to get done. That's just ridiculous. And when there's an alternative out there that's a one-time payment, why in the hell wouldn't I pay that one-time payment and use a software that I know can get the job done? And, and going back to the pricing, all of this is relative. Uh, if Adobe had, and I, I say this honestly, if Adobe had offered some sort of deal where if you want to pay for all of the software once, even if it was a very pretty penny, even if it was very expensive, you pay as just this huge chunk of cash one time will get you all the softwares and all the updates that come after it. I probably would have paid it, to be honest with you. In that time frame before I had made the switch to DaVinci Resolve, if Adobe had offered that, I probably would have paid it because I was so deep into the Adobe ecosystem and had used Adobe for so very long at that point. I don't know if I would have been, I don't know if anything else would have had leverage to convince me to switch just because Adobe is Adobe. You know, we're all used to using it. So much of the creative population still is because they haven't even considered trying anything else, but they continue to just charge 60 bucks a month and people continue to pay for it. It's, it's, it's crazy to me. The last point I want to make is Blackmagic doesn't train uh, any of their AI models on its users work. Adobe's use of their customers work to train their AI models is, to put it bluntly, disgusting. And it violates any NDAs that Adobe's customers might have with their own clients. So if it, uh, one of their clients is working on something, they have an NDA signed, they're working on it privately. It's not very private if Adobe's accessing that information to train their AI models. That's a violation of contract and not on the fault of the creative. So take all of these things as you will. These are my opinions, but I 
I do believe them. I find it crazy how people still defend Adobe. Adobe is a 168th billion dollar corporation. Like, you think they care about you? Like, you don't get to 160 billion dollar valuation by caring about people. You get to that valuation by prioritizing making money. And to make my point, here's what I mean. If Adobe cared about its customers and its users, here's all the things that they would do. They would A, make their products more stable. They would B, make their products more accessible to the average consumer professional. C, not have trained any AI models on any of their customers' work. And the damage for this is already done. There's no redemption for this. D, not have made the cancellation process for getting rid of their subscriptions so grueling that the United States Department of Justice had to file a lawsuit against them, and E, not pay their creative collaborative partners so poorly. I have plenty of videos on my channel about why I love DaVinci Resolve so much, and I will concede that Adobe does make a capable software, but is that capable software any good? In my eyes, no.